Hello! We're going to be using StormCAD, a tutorial, in order to look at some of the features that the program has to offer. We're going to use the Auto Design feature to find pipe sizes and invert elevations for a 25-year storm if the elevation of the drainage pond's water surface is 262.8 meters. Second of all, we're going to do find out what would be the effect on the system if the pond's water surface elevation were 0.1 or tenth of a meter below the ground elevation at the outfall. And third and lastly, we're going to do find out what will happen if to the system if the pond's water surface elevation is 262.8 meters in an additional flow of 0 0.5 cubic meters per second is added to catch basin number two. To start off, we're going to create a new project here. So we're going to click on that, and you can see that StormCAD is initializing, setting up a new project. And you see right now it's called Untitled 1. We're going to go ahead and do a file, save as, and call this. tutorial and I already have that name here in the documents library so I'm going to go and click yes then I want to replace it and you see it will now come up as the project is named tutorial We're now going to define a little bit more information about the project before getting started with <coughs> drawing the system and assigning values to the catch basins and outfall and such. So over here we go to Tools, Options, and now we're going to go to Drawing, and what we're going to do is instead of having it being scaled, in this case we're going to make it schematic. And when we come over here to units, we want to make sure that we're going to use metric units or SI. So we already have that checked. What we're going to do now is click over here and reset the default. And have it as being metric. Now we're done with the options. So we're going to close. The, oh, we're going to click OK. And we've now got those options for this project. What we're going to do now is go over here to give the project some basic information. So I'm clicking on project properties. This is going to be tutorial. I'm going to put myself in as the engineer. You'd want to enter your name and then company is going to be gateway for this instance and click OK and now I'm ready to start drawing the system that I'm going to analyze. Now as I lay out the system your system does not have to match this precisely in every detail because so this is schematic we're going to be assigning units the distances the lengths of the conduits and such later on so what we're going to do is Roughly, your system should look like this, but not have to be precisely the same. So I'm going to click Layout and do Conduit. Now you notice over here I have Manhole. What I want to do now is check and go to Catch Basin because I'm going to lay out three catch basins. So there's Catch Basin number one, Catch Basin number two, Catch Basin number three, and I'm coming down here. And what I want to do is make an outfall. I click that, and I'm done. And now I've laid out what the system will look like. So what I also want to do now is include the catchments that go with these. I'm going to click on where it says catchment. In order to put the catchments with the catch basins, I'm going to hold down the control and the left button of the mouse. 
and make the catchment. So here I am positioning it. Control, hold down the left mouse button, and I have now made catchment one. Repeat the procedure for catchment two. And last of all is hold down the control and the left mouse button, move it up and make catchment number three. This is roughly what your layout, your schematic should look like. There are two types of calculations that we're going to be performing on this system in the tutorial. First, we're going to look at StormCAD using the design feature to uh, design the conduits in parts uh, 2 and 3. StormCAD is going to be used to do an analysis. In order to set up those options, we're going to come over here to Analysis, click on it, and then we're going to come down to Calculation Options, and now we're going to make a new one. You see, open up a new window called New Solver 1. What we're going to do is double click on that, and we can now change its features. And here we're going to change the calculation type. Rather than being analysis, we want to go to making this design. So we've done that now. And now we're going to close out of this window. And we're to come over here and do a right click. Rename this. And we want to call this design. Calcs, and I click over here to accept that. Now I'm going to do the <coughs> same thing for the second portion of this tutorial, which is to get the analysis. So I'm going to now have a new solver, do a right click, rename it, and this is going to be called analysis. Calcs. And what I want to do is double click on it, pull this up, and verify that I do indeed have analysis as the calculation type of options. And I do, so I can now close that out, and I can close out the calculation options window. To design the conduit, StormCAD requires information defining the conduit size of materials. So we're going to be doing this by selecting the components portion of the menu here and putting things in, in the conduit catalog. So I come over here to components and look at conduit catalog. And I'm going to import material from the library. So I click that, import from the library. And I come down further, it says conduit catalogs. And I'm going to be doing this in metric. So I have metric. And the ones I'm going to be using for the conduits here are going to be box and concrete and circular and concrete. So I've selected those two type of options. I click select. And StormCAD is now importing those. So I have those as options to do for the design and analysis calculations. And now that the import is done, I can click Close. And I'm now going to begin Data Entry. And what I can do over here is come over to Components. Click on that, and what I'm going to do is start off with entering the storm data. And what I want to do here is a new storm data group. It is going to be user Define IDF table, and I click on that, and now I have the ability to go ahead and enter data in here. But you see, what I want to do is my storm duration, I don't want to have that in hours. I want to make that minutes, which I'll be using later when I look at how long the storm lasts. So I'm going to click on that, and instead of having, having hours, I want minutes. Click OK, and here I'm going to 
look at the storm return period, which is just, do I have a <clears throat> 5, 10, 25 year or some other frequency for the storm return frequency? I'm going to initially put in 5. Whoops. Didn't want to do that. What I want to do is come over here at a return period. I want another return period of 10 years. And then I want to have 25 years. And also what I want to do here now is look at the duration of the storm. And I want to double check initially over here is that my <coughs> rainfall is given in millimeters per hour. And here it is. If it wasn't given that way, I do a right click. And I can come over here to units and formatting and change it if I needed to, but we have it in the correct units. So I'm going to click OK. And now I'm going to add the duration of the storms that we're going to look at here for designing it. So I have 5, 10, 15, 30, and 60 minute storm duration. So here's 5. Add another one of 10. Add another one of 15, and 30, and then 60. So I'm ready, now ready to put in data. You see I have an empty table over here, which is some of the information that you were given in the tutorial to start with. So what I'm going to now do is enter the duration of the, uh, sorry, the amount of rainfall in millimeters per hour. So this is 165, 142, 123, 91, and 61. I go over here to the 10 year and 181, 156. 135, 103, and 70. And then the final column over here for the rainfall intensity, I have 205, 178, 154, 120, and 80. And now I have my rainfall complete. I can now close this out and I'm going to begin entering data for the catchments. So you see over here I still have my little cursor showing the one for the catchments. What I need to do is come over here and click on the arrow to select items. So in order to start I'm going to double click on catchment 1 Catchment 1 is the green pentagon, not this little square inside of it. If you click on this, this will be the catch basin. What I'm going to do is click outside of that, but in the green pentagon, and I will bring up the properties for Catchment 1. So there we go. And I now have the properties opened up for Catchment number 1. What I'm going to do for Catchment number 1 is assign the areas for the pervious and impervious area as well as the time of concentration. So I'm going to come over here. I look at my user defined area. I want to have it in hectares and indeed I do. So that's fine. So I'm going to come over here now to my rational C and I have this little ellipse on the side. And what I'm going to do now is open up this table which is going to give me my collection areas. So what I'm going to do now is I have one, two areas that I'm going to define. The first one is going to be the impervious area and the table that's given in tutorial number one gives me an impervious area of 0 0.16 and then the pervious area of 0 0.18. I've been given a 
coefficient. This is giving you an idea of how much of the water that falls as rain is going to percolate into the ground. So over here it's 0 0.9 for the impervious area and 0 0.3 for the impervious portion of it. So I now can click OK. And over here for my time of concentration, I have been given a time of five minutes. And what I'm going to do over here is just open up this again. Double check I've got the information OK for the areas. Click OK. And you see that it is now calculated and given me a scaled area. And I now have all the information assigned for the area in catchment number one. What I'm going to do now is assign an outflow element for this. So I've got the catchment area where all the rainfall is going to <coughs> happen and now I need to assign a element that will take that rainfall and channel it down into the storm sewer conduit. So over here I have my catchment and you see that I have no outflow element. What I'm going to need to do is assign that. So I click on it over here and it says none. But what I want to do is select the outflow element. So now allowing me to select that from the drawing. I want to move this out of the way so I can see it. And what I want to do is this catch basin one is the little square in the center. So I'm going to click on it and move this back up. You can see it is now assigned catch basin number one as the outflow element for catchment one. I've finished with the properties for the moment for catchment one. So I'm going to click out of that and I'm going to go and do the same type of thing I did for catchment one for catchment two. I double click, bring up the properties and over here I want to now go ahead and define my areas and I'm opening this up picking one two as points for the area and if you go back to the catch base and catchment and upfall information for this tutorial on that table you'll see that for catchment number two I have a impervious area of 0 0.13 and a pervious area of 0 0.15 my time of, I'm sorry, my coefficient for the impervious area over here is 0 0.9 and 0 0.3. I now have this defined, so I'm okay with that. My time of concentration here is given as 5 minutes. And I'm just going to open this back up again, click on it so that it calculates <coughs> my area and scales it. So I'm going to define that and again when I come over here to the outflow element I'm going to select the outflow element, move this out of the way, come over here to catch basin 2, click on it, it's now selected that. I've defined my properties for catchment number two for the time being. I click out of that and now come over here to catchment three and I'm going to do the same thing over here. I did for the other ones. Come over here to the rational C. Click. Open up one, two entries for the impervious and pervious area and from the table catchment basin catchment and outfall information. I'm going to enter the data, and in this case, I have an impervious area of 0 0.17 and a pervious area of 0 0.13. Assign my coefficients 0 0.9 and then 0 0.3. I'm okay. Have my time of concentration. At six minutes, time of concentration is the time.
time that the most distant drop would take in order to reach that catch basin. I've selected six. I'm coming over here and just making sure that it factors everything in. Coming over here again to now select the outflow element, which is has none. I'm clicking over here as select the outflow element. I can click select that from the drawing. Click catch base number three. And now I have put in the properties for all of the catchments. I'm now going to move on to defining the properties for the catch basin. So just like I did for the catchments, I'm going to just double click inside of the catch basin and the properties window opens up. So what I'm going to do now is just verify that I have some of the information selected correctly. So what I'm going to do now is look at a couple of items the design set the design structure elevation I want to set that to false so that is indeed false over here I want to look at design inlet openings to false and indeed it is false I'm going to set the inlet type by clicking on that line so I come over here to inlet type and rather than having it full capture, what I want to have is percent capture. And 100% is just fine in this instance. And now what I want to do is set the inlet location. And I don't want it to be on grade. But what I want to do, because I know that this will come up as an issue later, I'm going to put in a Manning's friction factor of 0.013. And this is what it would be for concrete. I'm now coming over here to selecting INSAG. And what I want to do now is look at the elevation for ground. So I'm going to come over and set that. And from our table that we looked at before, the catch base and catchment and not fall information table, I know that this is going to have a value of 264.8 meters 264.8 and while I'm going through this just to make sure I'm looking at do I have indeed things set as meters uh, just every once in a while I do run across some things that are still in English units here but everything should be metric but we just want to double check that as we're entering the information So now what we want to do is look at setting the head loss method. And down over here, it's right now as absolute. And I don't want it as absolute for this tutorial. I want to select standard. And this is going to be a coefficient of 0 0.5. And at this point, I believe everything's been selected for catch basin 1. So what I can do is I could come over here and select Catch Basin 2, but as it says in the tutorial at this case, it says close this out. And I'm going to do is double click on this and open up the information for Catch Basin 2. What I'm going to do again is design structure elevation is false. Design inlet opening is false. That's what I want. I want to come over here now to my inlet type and that be full capture but percent capture and 100 percent is fine again i'm going to have in sag rather than on grade but i want to because i know this will come up as a warning when i do the calculation i'm going to put in a number for the friction coefficient of 0 0.013 and now what I'm picking is instead of on grade, I want to have it in SAG. Next, I'm going to go back to my table for the catch basins, catchments, and outfall. And for catch basin number two, the elevation that I want is going to be 
264.5. So now I've selected that. And now I'm going to come down and pick out my loss method. And again, it's standard and 0 0.5. And this time I'm going to come over here as I move on from Catch Basin 2 to Catch Basin 3. I'm just going to select it from here. And now I enter the same information as I had for the other two Catch Basins. Look at Design Structure Elevation. Okay, that is false. The Design the Inlet Opening is false. And then I'm going to move over here to the inlet type. And instead of full capture, I'm going to go to percent capture. Whoops. Wrong thing. There we go. Now I have 100%. And just like I did previously, is I'm entering a factor over here to prevent error messages later on because I know that that is going to be needed I'm going to do this in SAG come over here to the elevation go back to my table and at this point I know that for catch basin 3 this is going to be 265.0 and then come over to the head loss method Make it standard and 0 0.5 is my coefficient and I should now have all the information in place that I need for catch basin 3. What I'm going to do now is set the properties for outfall 1. So I'm going to click out of this, do a double click on outfall one and there I have my properties table I could have alternatively done the selection this way also but now I'm going to set these properties so I'm going to start off by setting the boundary condition type so I come down here to boundary condition type and right now it's selected as free outfall what I'm going to actually do is instead of having a free outfall, I want to have user defined tailwater. And now it says elevation of the defined tailwater in meters. And I'm going to pick that as being 262.8. You also would have found that information in the table for the catch basin catchment and outfall information. I'm sorry, it was not in there, but uh, that's what we've been defining it as. So now the outfall is not included in the design calcs for this analysis, so I'm going to set the design structure elevation to false. So I come down over here, look at design structure elevation, it is indeed false. So what I'm going to then do is come over and I want to put in the elevation for the ground and the elevation for the ground is given in the table for the catch basin catchment and outfall information it's 264.6 meters so coming over here 264.6 meters and I've selected that So I'm now finished with the information I need for outfall one. So I'm going to click out of that. It saves my information. I'm now going to begin defining the information that I need for the tutorial for the conduit. So I'm going to double click on conduit one and bring it up. And I now have its properties over here. And I'm going to do is set the design conduit to true as well as the design start invert start and the design 
stop invert to true. So coming down here, design conduit. Yes, indeed, I want it to be true. And I have the design start invert. I want that one to be true also. And the design stop invert as true also. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to set the conduit length over here. And what I want it to have it as being is 20 meters. And the reason that we're doing that is that the conduit length is usually defined because we enter the schematic as the type of system we were initially setting up. And that was for the drawing format. So because we selected schematic, we have to enter the information. So what we're going to do now is, since this is a design run, the previously arranged catalog of potential conduits has to be referenced in order for Stormcat to determine the conduit diameter of CO1, which is the conduit we're working on right now. So we're going to set the conduit type to catalog conduit, and then the, set the conduit shape to circular pipe, and then set the material to concrete. So we come up over here to conduit type, and we're going to get that um, I want to select over here as catalog conduit and you see over here I have the section type as being circular what I could have done is as we've done earlier is we have the conduit type is circular or box so we have circular and indeed conduit number one co-1 is circular so we're going to leave that the way it is we're now going to move down to material and select the type of material it's made out of and where you have a single selection as concrete so now I've done that next thing I'm going to do is select the conduit size so over here we have nothing selected as the size I come over here click the little down arrow and the minimum I have is 200 millimeters so that's going to be the starting point for the storm gad calculations and now what I need to do is repeat this type of process for conduits 2 and 3. Remembering that conduit 3 is 10 meters long and that its shape is going to be a box pipe. So let's go back over here and I'm going to select conduit number 2 and do the same thing that I had done for conduit 1. So I'm coming over here to design conduit and I want this to be true and the start and stop for the invert I'm going to make that true and true come down to conduit type and select from a catalog I want this to be circular is correct the material is going to be concrete again and then section size, I'm going to be taking that from the smallest one as the starting point. What I'm going to come down here now is pick the conduit length of 20 meters. And I should now have everything picked out for conduit number two. And I'm now moving on to conduit number three. Let's see, I have it here. Again, I'm doing the design the conduit as true. I'm allowing Stormcad to pick out the start and stop elevations for the inverts. Then selecting the conduit type from the conduit catalog. And in this case, remember we said before that we want to have this as being the box. And then with the length was 10 meters as opposed to 20 that it was for 
can do it one and two. So uh, putting in 10. And now what I want to do is select the material. And this is going to be out of concrete. And my section size, as I did previously, I'm going to pick the smallest one of the sizes that's available in order to let Stormcad know this is where it's supposed to be beginning its calculations. We're now finished defining the conduits. So I can click out of this. We're now going to be defining the design constraints for tutorial one here. So coming over here and pick components from the pull down menu, the default design constraints. And you see we have information for a gravity pipe, which we're now going to set and we want to be on the velocity tab which we are indeed and our velocity is in meters per second which is good so we want to enter a minimum velocity of 1.0 the maximum velocity is going to be 3.0 and then we're going to now move over to clicking on the cover tab and the cover tab we want a minimum of 1.0 And we want to put over here as a maximum for the cover of 50 meters. Oops, and I've got this one specified wrong. This should be 1.0 meters. And now I should have 50 meters, as it says in the information for the tutorial. Now I'm going to go click on the slope. And the slope, we want a minimum slope of half a percent, which is 0 0.005. And the maximum slope is going to be 10%, which is 0 0.10. So what we're going to do now is come over here to the node and we want to be sure that we have set the pipe matching field to inverts which is indeed what we have and we are going to now click close and we've defined all the information we need for the model to run the model we're going to have to define the rainfall of the storm that's going to be used in order to calculate the dimensions for everything here so we're going to go to the analysis pull down tab over here and we want to take a look at alternatives and then we want to look at the one for the storm so here is the rainfall runoff I'm going to expand that and if we double click on that we now have this window that pops open we want to look at well what global storm event do we want to use and we have the 5 10 and 25 year storms as possibilities that we previously defined we're going to pick the 25 year and then we're going to click out of this since we now have the rainfall information that we need and we can click out of alternatives for the time being we're now going to come over here to analysis scenarios and you see that we have base scenario so we're going to double click on it and this opens up the window for the properties we want to make sure the calculation option is set to design calcs so we're going to come down over here and click on this little down arrow and we want to have this as design calcs and we can now click out of this window and out of the scenarios window and we're now ready to go ahead and run the model if you look at this one over here it says compute 
So now we click this one here, and it's going to ask you if you want to save the design data as a new physical alternative, which would give you access to initial data and the final design within the same model. But we're going to click No. And you see that we have one or more validation errors or warnings. And we're going to take a look at those and see where we had some problems. So it says over here that for the base scenario that we have design default design constraints percentage full should be greater than zero. Now we're going to correct that error by getting out of this and we had the design default design constraints from the components window so the tutorial that I provided for you didn't have everything completely defined so we're going to apparently we're going to now come over here and look at the percent full and is the percent full over here is part full design option and we want to look at okay in order to get the model to run I'm going to say we're going to be able to go up to 100% close this out close that out and if we come back over here to run again we're going to have same window pop open. We're going to again click no. And we again have another maximum number of barrels should be greater than zero. Okay. We're going to correct that one. Click close. Again, come over here to the components pull down. Default design constraints. Number of barrels. Allow multiple barrels. We're going to come over here and maximum number of barrels, which is the <coughs> number of uh, barrels for the, the pipe out fall of the uh, catch basins. We're going to pick one and then close. Come over here and click run again. Again, no. And we have another error message popping up that says, Default design constraints maximum spread and sag should be greater than zero. So we're going to come over here and fix that. Again, it's components, default design constraints, and coming over here to section size. And actually, section size is not the correct one. I'm going to come over here to inlet, and here you see. We're talking about the maximum spread in SAG. So let's go and make that one meter. The maximum depth in SAG in millimeters. And let's say that we're going to go with 100. Maximum efficiency on grade. That's our minimum efficiency on grade. Let's make that 80% to get the model to run. I click close. Now when I run it, again I have no. And now it's run successfully. So now that I've got it run successfully, click over here to take a look at the report, which it's opening up. And there's just some basic information that it is indeed run successfully. So I'm going to close out of this. Look at details, and here's a summary of all my calculations. Which gives me all the information on the system. And for any one of these, if I wanted to get a report, I could click over here, generate the report, and there's all my information. So in this case, yes, indeed, I do have the report. I want to keep it. I'm going to do file and print. And look over here for PDF creator and say print. And here's my PDF creator. I'm not going to want to download that. So what I want to do here is I've got document title everything 
and I'm fine with that so I'm going to click and save it you can save this wherever you like to I'm going to stick this on my desktop and it's called calculation detailed summary and click save and now I have my report click out of this I can close this window and close this one and we're done with the first portion of the tutorial the second part of the tutorial that we were given was what would be the effect on the system if the pond's water surface elevation were 0.1 meter below the ground elevation at the outfall so what we're going to do is go back and specify the ground elevation at outfall 1 it was given initially at 264.6 meters but we're going to be changing that in order to change that we're going to double click on outfall 1 open up its property window and we're going to change the elevation tailwater meters from the 262.8 to 264.5 so here's the elevation user defined tailwater and we're going to change that to 264.5 so we've done that and we now can close out this properties dialog and we're now going to move on to opening the scenario manager going over here to analysis scenarios and we're going to double click on base and we're going to now <clears throat> look at selecting the analysis calcs so I'll come down over here so design calcs we want analysis calcs that we had selected earlier so now we can close out this item and this item and we're going to click the compute button which is right over here so we're going to move this out of the way and see what our error messages are conduit does not meet minimum velocity constraint the portions over here are flooded so we're going to click on this and look at our messages and there we have that popped open you'll see here that we have a couple of issues that were identified and the increase in tailwater elevation produces low velocities in conduit number three and catch basins one and two are flooded so we're now going to click out of the user notification details and we're also going to click out of the calculation summary and out of this and what we want to do is double click on conduit C03 to activate its property table and what we're going to do is scroll down to the results section and here we see that the conduit velocity average is 0.82 which is less than the default constraint they gave of one meter per second so here's our velocity and it's 0.82 so now we're going to move on and look at catch basin one and see what its properties are and we compare the elevation ground meters of the catch basin with the elevation of the energy grade line so what we're going to do is scroll down over here to look at the results section
and here you can see that the depth in is 264.81 we had specified 264.8 so it is slightly flooded over here and you can repeat this procedure and look at catch basins two and three again we had seen those results that catch basins one and two will be flooded so the answer to our question is what would be the effect on the system if the pond's water surface elevation were a tenth of a meter below the ground elevation at the outfall the answer is that there's going to be low flow velocity will occur in box culvert co-3 and flooding will occur in catch basins one and two now the last portion of the tutorial that we need to address is answering question what will happen to the system if the pond's water surface elevation is 262.8 meters and additional flow of half a meter per second or half a cubic meter per second is added to CB2 so let's begin with that we're going to first get out of results from the second portion of the tutorial and what we're going to do is double click on outfall one in order to access its properties what we're going to do is change the elevation here of the tailwater and change that back to 262.8 and once we've done that we can close out of the properties for outfall one then we're going to go and look at catch basin number two to activate its properties dialog Now we have it open and our problem stated that we're going to have an additional 0.5 cubic meters per second added over here. So we're going to go down to, it says, flow additional subsurface cubic meters per second. And we're going to define that. So here we are, we're coming down. We see flow additional subsurface, but we are in liters per second, not meters. I'm going to do a right click, go to units and formatting. I want to have this in cubic meters per second. And now OK. Now I have the correct units. I want this to be 0 0.5. And now that I've defined that, I'm OK. I can click out of this. And I'm ready to go ahead and click the compute button to run the model. So here we are clicking the compute. And you see that here are my messages, just like we had with the second portion of the tutorial. And you can see from these results is that for Conduit 2 is that it has excessive flow. These are the error messages saying that uh, its velocity is too high and in conduit number three that it has excessive flow also since it's receiving the flow from conduit number two that it has excessive flow over there and catch basins one and two are flooded so we're going to close out of these windows If we wanted to find out some more information, we could come over here to View, Flux Tables, and pick it out for Conduit Table. We could find more information about the details by looking at this of what was used in the calculation. We could also take a look at the properties of any individual component by double clicking on it and finding out more information about the results but we now have our answer to the question that we posed which was what will happen to the system if the pond surface water surface elevation 
is 262.8 meters in additional flow of half a cubic meter per second is added to CB2, catch basin number 2, and the answer is that we'd have excessive flow would occur in conduit CO3, excessive flow and velocity would occur in conduit CO-2, and flooding would occur at each of the basins CB1 and CB2. The homework assignment that I've given you calls for you to go ahead and save this and upload the final file. So if you come over here to File, Save As, and in this case I want it to be called Homework HW06 Storm CAD So if you come over here, give it that name. I'm going to be saving this on my desktop. You can save it wherever you want to. Now I have StormCAD for this particular homework assignment. Save it, and that's what I want you to upload and <coughs> for the homework assignment. So you're now finished with the tutorial, and hopefully you've learned a bit how to operate the program. And even though the tutorial doesn't cover everything, I showed you how to go ahead and address some of the error messages you'd receive if you ran the program and didn't have everything specified.